Hello everybody, it's me RJ here again with another video for you guys. Uh, this is the Craftsman R110 and uh, after owning it about two years I started having some issues with steering. I'll show you what I'm talking about right now. Uh, when I'm outside mowing my grass my steering will slip and pop and sometimes it won't turn back. Today I'm going to show you why that's happening and how to fix it. All right, we're looking at the underneath of the lawnmower. I got it propped up right here. Is this little rack and pinion type setup. There's a circular or round gear right here and then there's this flat bar with some teeth on it right here. And the steering, when you turn the steering wheel, this little gear turns on this bar right here and grabs these teeth and turns the wheels. Let's see if I can show you that right now. So what's happened over time is this has come loose, it has a lot of play in it and it's fallen away from this circular bracket here. There's not much wear on this so there's no reason that it should be slipping like this. And if you look all throughout this little area here with this bracket and the gears, there's nothing to adjust to fix this issue. So I'm going to show you what I did to fix this issue, we'll go through it step by step. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is remove this plastic uh, because there's two bolts on the other side that if you loosen the nuts, the bolts are gonna slip right out and fall back up into here. So it'd be a lot easier to remove this so that you can work on both sides. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove this Phillips head screw right here. Next thing you're gonna do is just squeeze on this. There's a, a pin here that grabs on and then you can slide it towards the left and then you can pop it out. Next thing we're gonna do is get a flathead screwdriver. We're gonna pop up these little plastic pins. There's one here and one here. So just get the screwdriver in the little flat area right there and pop it up like that. And you should be able to pull this out like this. Do the same thing to that one. Okay, once you have both of the plastic pins out, you can take the inserts out also if you like. You can pull those straight out with your finger or work them out with the uh, flathead screwdriver. Same thing, take this one out also. Then you're going to grab this whole piece and just pull it up all the way as far as you can get it pulled up so that you can see inside of here. Okay. When you get this far, you're probably not going to see the two bolts that I'm going to show you because there's so much junk in there. So go ahead and clean this out, blow it out with an air hose, wipe it out, whatever you need to do to clean that out. And um, once I get mine cleaned out, I'll show you where those two bolts are. Okay, so we got it cleaned out. There is a bolt here and a bolt here. These are the two bolts that I was talking about that if you loosen the nuts on the other side, these bolts are either going to fall through this way and you're going to lose them or you're not going to be able to get the uh, nut off the other side so it's just easier to reach over here and hold these with your finger while you're loosening them on the other side which I'll show you here in just a minute. Okay in order to get this bracket off here you're going to need 7 16 socket for these two and a half inch for this one and when I remove these two on the sides here I'm going to reach over the top like this and hold that bolt in place the one i was showing you earlier if you see right there i'm just gonna hold that in place that way it'll be a lot easier for me to take these nuts off and not lose the bolts i'm gonna go ahead and remove this remove these three bolts right now i forgot to mention it when you're removing this one Make sure you put one hand on one of the tires to keep it from turning back and forth. It'll be a lot easier for you to get that nut off. Now that we got this off and loose, we're going to need a pair of needle nose pliers to get behind here and here to remove, the, uh, to remove a cotter pin that holds this part of the steering mechanism on. 
Okay, if you look closely right here where I'm pointing my needle nose plier, there's the uh, cotter pin. We'll need to remove that on both sides in order to get everything out. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those out right now and show you how to uh, drop down that uh, steering mechanism unit. All right, once you got the two cotter pins out, you're probably going to need to replace those because one of them broke when I pulled it out. Uh, sometimes they break, sometimes they don't. So if you are planning on doing this, make sure you get some cotter pins. Um, you can go ahead and pull these poles out or just grab this whole piece and everything's going to come out with it just like this. And go ahead and set it down and grab this gear here and just slide it off like this. If you look closely, there's not much wear and tear on this gear right here at all. On the inside or the outside. Same thing with this piece here. All these gears are in pretty good shape. Except for two right here, they're worn down just a little bit. But that shouldn't be messing up our steering that much. What is happening is, if you can look down here real close, this gear turns the whole mechanism left and right when you turn the steering wheel and you see how much play is in here when this is sitting on the steering wheel there's a lot of play in there and it's coming back off of that circular gear and that is what's making it slip all over the place so what i'm going to do is show you a fix that i came up with on my own to make an adjustment to this bar here to shove this bar butt up against this circular gear so that that problem doesn't happen again at least not for a long time so the next step is to go ahead and slide these poles out or these rods you can just slide them right up into those holes and slide them out just like this and set them somewhere that you're not going to lose them get them out of the way okay you can also take out this uh, gear piece here by just sliding it out like that all right the next step is just take this plastic piece out and you can kind of roll it towards yourself and it'll lay flat and you can pull it out of the side here and get it out of your way all right now that you got your plastic insert piece out of here your gear and you have this gear get them all out of the way set them aside and get you a hammer what we're going to do is take this piece right here and we're going to hit on it a couple times and bend it in that way that's going to tighten up where that plastic bracket sits and it's going to sit in there extremely tight and that gear is not going to have any play and that should fix the problem so what we're going to do is take this we're just going to give it a couple hits with the sledgehammer you don't have to beat the mess out of it. You just want it to bend a little bit. Okay. Now, you're going to take your insert here. You're going to slide it back in. See how I've, I've got a hold of it? That, that rigid side goes to the back. You're going to lay it like this. Slide it in there. Make sure you get it slid all the way to the other side. And now it's not going to go in there as easy as it did before because you have that back bracket bent. So once you have it into this position, it's going to kind of sit angled like this. You're going to have to press it and snap it into place like that. Now that you have it in there and it's snapped into place and everything looks good, you're going to take your uh, flat gear here and slide it back through. And that's also going to sit in there kind of snug. If you got it really, really tight where you can't push it slightly with your hand, you might need to take this back out and hammer it that way just a little bit. You don't want to bend it in too far to be so tight it won't steer at all. Now this should fix the problem because what's going to happen, this is going to remove all that play. You can see now I can't even move that at all. Uh, there's no tilting or anything uh, in that gear. So when we place this gear back down, it fits exactly where it should and it's butt up against the uh, gear here and that should fix our problem so we're gonna go ahead and put it back together and try it out all right time to reassemble so you want to take your, your rod for the steering you're gonna place it down 
drop and turn it. You want to do the same thing for the other side. Face it down, drop, and turn it. Okay, now that you have those in place, you can go ahead and, and get it placed onto the center gear here. Okay, go ahead and grab your nut, your half inch nut for the center, and just get that on right here. Just tighten it up a little bit by hand to kind of hold everything in place while you're fixing the uh, tire rods. Next step is gonna be to get your cotter pin. You're gonna place the tire rod back up through the hole and then you're gonna place your cotter pins in. So I'm gonna go ahead and place these up in here and get the cotter pins put in and then we'll go from there. All right, now that we've got everything in place, I'm gonna wiggle on this and look at this. There is no play in that at all nice and tight so let's go up to the front reassemble everything and then we're going to drive this dude around and i promise you this is going to fix your problem take your uh cowl here your plastic uh, guard whatever you want to call it slide it down make sure every one of these tabs goes in its slot or it's going to be a pain to get on so we're going to go ahead and slide this down there's a tab up front uh, up top a tab here a tab on the bottom and a tab on the other side so i'm going to go ahead and slide that down and get that back in place okay everything's back in place on that so take your uh, tab that looks like this with the hole in it pop it in here take the other one same exact thing pop it in here and then you take this center piece here and you place it in it only fits in one direction but it'll snap right back in there and it won't come out unless you pry it out same thing on the other side line it up snap it in now we're ready to put this piece back on so we just slide it down get everything in place it's kind of hard to do with one hand snap it in i'm going to go ahead and turn it this way and slide it snap it in and remember don't forget to put the uh, screw, Phillips head screw in here. Let me go get that and get that in place and I'll get back with you in just a minute. All right, now that we've got it back in place, let's test this out. Let's go. All right, everybody, that's it. A good fix a cheap fix and one that will last a long long time there's absolutely no more play in the gear when i first bought this lawnmower there was a little bit of play in the gear and over the years there was more and more and more play and uh, now there's no play at all um, it's as tight as can be and you could see where i was driving i was driving at um, the fastest speed and turning all over the place and there was no slippage in the steering so anyway guys give me a thumbs up um, if you didn't like the video give me a thumbs down Share it if you know somebody that has this lawnmower and they're having the same problem and they need to save some money. They can do this. You can do this. Anybody can do this. Uh, even if you have to grab somebody to help you, you can do it. Do it on your own. It'll save you money so you don't have to bring it to a mechanic. Um, that's what I make these videos for. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.